Okay, as we start to grow the voice and as we start to get all these really cool places and all these little amphitheaters and all the different things we talked about, um, I, I want to break this down into two different ways of growing the voice, okay? The first way is the chest, growing the chest voice and the belting mid-voice range, okay? Growing the mid-voice, which differs obviously depending on what kind of a voice that you have. But we want to stretch it as far as we can before we hand it off into the head voice. Now there's two schools of thought on that. I'll talk about the second one in a minute, but I want to talk about this one first. This right here is going to be the introduction to connecting chest with head voice, which is the mix section or the bridge or passaggio we talked about a little while ago. Now that usually happens for the tenor and the soprano around the G sharp, right, A for a lower tenor, all the way up even as high as the C, right, and the D to hand it off. Now, this is true also for contraltos, altos, you will, you'll bridge in the same place. And of course, the sopranos will do this about an octave above. Some of them, just depending on where they're at, like a first soprano won't necessarily do that. A, a, a coloratura will do that much higher. And a first or second soprano will actually bridge lower. So, but, but anyway, so uh, let's, let's talk about uh, where this bridge happens and how it happens, okay? We must, must do this as lightly as we can in order to be able to get this to bridge correctly. And we want to use the least amount of air possible, okay? So we're going to go, starting up higher this time. I'm already starting to actually connect my chest with my head voice. I'm not going, la, right? The little yodel or the froggy thing. I call it the speed bump. So what we do is we only sing as loud as we can connect. Now, I'm not using a bunch of air going, la, right? Because the overuse of air is our enemy. It dries out the cord and it, it can inhibit all kinds of terrible things, hoarseness and eventually even polyps or nodes. We don't want that, okay? So what we're gonna do is very gently, we're gonna connect and we're gonna only sing as loud as we can connect without hearing the speed bump or the yodel. Uh -huh. slower than that, if you're saying, Ken, you're going a little too fast, stop, stop the DVD, slow it down a bit. But do yourself a favor and try not to linger right at the bridge because it's too hard and it's too confusing to trip, to be off balance and, and say the la and, and, and linger right there at the bridge. Try to get through it and out of it. Even if you do hear the yodel, back off the volume even more, but try to pass through it and back across it again without trying to stand on the bridge and, and not lose your balance, okay? So. By the way, nothing's changed. Our jaw's wide open, we've got our support, we're sitting up straight, our tongue's dropped to the base of the jaw, the uvula's going up in the back of our throat. And we're still using our vowel modifications. Nothing's changed, right? Once you've got the connection and you're able to make and do and build that connection without hearing the register break, 
two things. The first thing is, is you can start to add more volume into the sound. So you can start to add, or go take it go a little louder and start to grow that section more and more. The second thing is, if you're having trouble with the bridge and you're just, gosh, I just can't get it, I just can't get it, you're getting frustrated. For now, I'm gonna give you permission to add a little H to the sound to get it to cross over so that you don't hear the bridge. This is what I mean. La, la, la. I'm giving you permission to add a little H huh, to the sound, but I want you to cut that back and get rid of it. As soon as you're able to get in and out of that bridge, I want you to cut that back and have that same sensation of that open throat to where the th feeling in the throat does not change in the back as you're going through the passaggio. Now I said something a second ago, there's two schools of thought on this. The first school of thought is, this is what I know to be true. Other people have a difference of opinion and I'm gonna tell you good and bad about it. If you stretch your voice as high as you can, your, your mid chest belting voice, if you stretch that as high as you can before you hand it off into the head voice in the bridge connection, right? A, two things will happen. You'll have a much stronger mid voice and you'll be able to grow the mid voice into one like, hey, belting wailing sound, right? And the upper mid voice, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be able to grow that section and really nail it through your upper mid voice. So I recommend pulling the chest as far as you can before handing it off into the head. If you're not interested that you're an arm, hey, yeah, 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 and you're an R&B guy or something like that, then it's okay. You don't have to stretch that as far as we do because we're looking for that big, belty, whaley sound up top. Then you can actually connect earlier and maybe even connect as early as you can before you hand it off to grow the head voice stronger and bring the head down into the chest register range. I don't necessarily personally recommend that because as, a, as someone that's been doing this a long time, I can do both. Because I've connected and stretched my chest up into my head register, it gives me the ability to have that at my fingertips or that in my vocabulary or repertoire for singing. And I can sing the R&B stuff light and bring the head voice down and connect early. You can do it my way, but you can't do it the other way around. What I mean is, is if you connect too early and you want a belting midsection, it ain't gonna happen, okay? So you can do that and it's okay. If you're just doing pop or you're just doing jazz or you're doing R&B or something and that's the sound you want because that's kind of where most people are at for that sound, then it's okay. You don't necessarily have to be an athlete and stretch that chest as far as you can before you connect. But if you want to be able to do both, you really should stretch it as high as you can and then later experiment by bringing down the head voice once you've built up the chest voice into that register. Okay, let's continue. 